Well, I'm joined now down the line by Michael Cole, former BBC royal commentator. Uh, and Michael, uh, as someone that knows uh, Charles pretty well, um, just like a personal statement to begin from you. Well, Nigel, first of all, I think you've, uh, you and Cameron have summarised the situation brilliantly at very, very short notice. Uh, I'd like to echo and associate myself with your kind and generous and loyal uh, sentiments that you expressed on your own behalf and, and those of GB News and of our viewers to His Majesty the, Queen, the King, because um, let's be frank about it, this is big news, it's bad news, it's grave news, it could hardly be worse. And as you have rightly said, there will be speculation. But I believe that um, uh, we must commend uh, His Majesty the King for his candor in this case, which has uh, distinguished the uh, statements that have come from the very, very, very beginning uh, of this episode, this sad episode. And that is contrasting very strongly with the past when obfuscation was the order of the day with royal health statements, and indeed, in the past, lots of barefaced lies. The king has least come out, and he's made it clear, to good effect, what was, uh, uh, what was wrong, what was happening, uh, and what the future was. Uh, and we know now uh, what has happened, the dreaded word, as you say, cancer. Mm. But um, mm. I hope he might take some small comfort from the fact that actually he's been even closer to death than he is tonight, because when he was 12 years old in 1962, uh, he had a very, very hot appendix and he was rushed to Great Ormond Street Hospital. Uh, it was made quite light at the time, but he was very close to death because when a burst appendix happened in those days, peritonitis set in, blood poisoning, and death was often the result. But that was all uh, done very nicely at the time, a long time ago. Now, of course, he's facing a new challenge, uh, and it's, uh, it is a very, very difficult moment for him. It's a difficult moment for the country. And I can't say, and of course, I haven't always been his greatest fan in the past, but I think he's started brilliantly as king. He's had only just over a year and a half uh, as monarch, and it's terribly bad fortune for this to have hit him at this particular moment. There we see him coming out of hospital, looking very cheery with Queen Camilla, waving to the people and putting a very best foot forward. Then, of course, uh, we didn't know uh, that this other cancerous element has been discovered during the surgery for an enlarged prostate. We don't know what it is. There will be lots of speculation. Maybe the palace will feel it's um, obligatory to give us more information in due course. And uh, I feel very, very sorry for the man because he waited mm. 70 years for yeah. opportunity to be yeah. king. Yeah. It does actually make me think that, you know, in history, the name Charles was always regarded as rather an unlucky name in the royal family. King Charles I lost his head, of course. He was uh, executed in White Whitehall uh, by the axeman's blade. Um, king Charles II never had any legitimate heirs. And for that reason, the name Charles was not a favourite one uh, within the House of Windsor. But anyway, he was he was christened Charles, and uh, here he is as King Charles the Third. We could only wish him well. Uh, it, it, it has been said, and I think there is some justice in that that it's a good thing that this has been caught early. Uh, but you know, nobody ever wants to have, have have cancer. And I think you made the point earlier, and it's a jolly good one that when people go in. For something, they then find something else. I have to say, to introduce a, a personal note, uh, last Tuesday I had an eye, a routine eye exam, and I came out finding that I had a cataract on my left eye, which I had no idea about. So yeah. I'm now on the cataract pathway to have it removed. Well, that, of course, is a minor matter compared with what His Majesty the King is now facing. And as you said so eloquently earlier, we can only wish him well and a speedy recovery. And in the meantime, he will be carrying out his duties uh, as head of state, uh, having the red boxes, signing the acts of parliament and doing everything else that is required, which is what he would wish to do.
No, absolutely, Michael, and I agree with you. You know, he waited for the best part of 70 years. Uh, the coronation only seems like yesterday, and, and, and here we are with this problem. I just, getting back to how frank he's going to be with the country, you know, when we were told that it was a prostate problem, enlarged prostate. And I wondered then, did we need that much information? But the argument was made to me very forcefully that no, actually, you know, the king talking about it may well encourage other people with problems uh, to come forward. And I, I bought that. I bought into that. Yeah. But, but in yeah. contrast... You, you, know the United, you, you know the United States are better than most. You know American presidents better than almost anybody. And you yeah. will know that even if it's not in the Constitution... The Americans have a right to know everything about the health of the president. Yeah. Almost too much detail is given, you know, the uh, blood pressure figures and all the rest of it. Now, that is the American way of doing things. Everything is out there. Uh, that's their, their way of being, and yeah. I admire it. I think uh, for the king and for the royal family to have moved as far as possible down that route is only a good thing. People are more and more used to, I mean, people used to hide. I mean, people used to shudder at the word cancer. People are now more and more prepared to share with other people uh, their ailments. I'm not quite sure that I am, but many people are, and they take comfort from this. And I think it's to be commended. I think if he was... Uh, uh, hiding it all, it, it would it would then not look good. And he's essent essentially what he's doing. He's taking the country with him. He's yeah. seventy five. We always knew it wouldn't be a hugely long reign. Uh, and I think he's got nothing to lose and a lot to gain uh, by bringing us all with him. There we see him uh, in. They're wearing the ties of the Guards Brigade. Him with his his sons. And to hear that Prince Harry's coming back, well, one can only say not before time. Perhaps uh, he's realised what is important in life. And what is important in life is the people you love most. And when they're in trouble, you come and support them. Absolutely. Michael Cole, as ever, thank you for joining me.